In this video, we're going to talk about what to expect from CES 2021 in terms of televisions. Hello everyone, Vincent Dio from HDTV Test here. Now, I am due to attend a few briefings under NDA for the next two weeks before CES 2021 starts. And I figured that before my lips are sealed, I probably should do a video telling you what I expect from CES 2021, which is going to be digital only due to the situation around the world. And so, you know, no one can sue me or accuse me of actually leaking any actual info which I have been provided for under embargo. So with that out of the way, what I'm going to do is to start with Samsung, the biggest TV manufacturer in the world. Now, last night I did a video talking about their 2021 mini LED televisions and I think you know we have figured out their naming convention for next year which is going to be Q85NA and Q90NA for the 4K QLED models with mini LED backlighting. But besides focusing on that, obviously the South Korean brand is going to be producing and selling regular QLEDs without mini LED backlighting as well and those will be the Q60A and also the Q70A and depending on what Samsung decides to do it may be just edge lit or using their dual LED color technology or they may even throw in a sprinkle of full array local dimming but I think that it is going to be very unlikely because I think Samsung has set its path to 8K and they are really going to try and push 8K again next year. So I think you know most of the higher end technologies will only be reserved for 8K sets including more local dimming zones. Then the South Korean brand is also pushing micro LED technology and I think you know maybe a couple of weeks ago we saw that the company has announced a new 110 inch micro LED TV which is prefabricated so it's easier to install so there will be less hassle for the general consumer and also it will be one of the first products from the company in terms of micro LED display that will be available in a B2C format rather than just B2B. Still, we have since found out the official price of the 110 inch micro LED TV from Samsung and it is priced appropriately at 170 million Korean wons and that will translate to around 150,000 US dollars or maybe 115,000 pounds you know in the UK and I think you know it is still not attainable by the general consumer and I still stick by my prediction maybe done earlier this year that within the next four to five years you won't be able to see a consumer level micro LED television that you know you can buy in stores at a price below say five thousand pounds or something but you know famous last words let's see what CES 2021 brings so from Samsung we go over Crosstown to LG one of their arch rivals from Korea and with LG we have already figured out their naming convention for their 2021 OLEDs so they will have the B1, the C1, the G1 and also the 8K Z1 or Z1. Now Obviously, I think the South Korean brand is focusing on OLED because OLED is really what they are famous for, is really their bread and butter. But the company also makes LED LCD panels and televisions. And I think, you know, there have been some reports online saying that the company, LG, will also be using mini LED technology in their higher end LED LCD TVs and again using the same method we discovered the model numbers for their OLEDs we have also discovered some model numbers for their nano cell LED LCD televisions and I think you know it is going to be quite confusing because if you can see here they will be still using nano 99 next year and if I'm not mistaken I think this year we already have a nano 99 and it was an 8k top-end flagship model but 
still, you know, using the same model number next year is going to be slightly confusing. Also, they will have various other nano cell models. As you can see here, nano 93, nano 83. It's all going to be quite confusing for the general consumers. And it may only make sense to the 10 people in the world who understand binary. So I'm not entirely sure what's up with the model numbers of the nanocell televisions, but hopefully LG will be able to give us more clarity come CS 2021. So those are from LG's point of view. Now next, what we are going to do is to jump over to Sony, which is one of the brands competing in the USA against LG when it comes to OLED TVs. And I expect some big things from Sony this year in terms of their OLED. Because if you remember for 2020, the company only introduced one line of new OLED. Well, two lines if you count the A9 or A9. S, but I think realistically, they only introduced one really popular line of OLED, which is the A8, or in the USA, it's called the Bravia A8H. And the Master Series A9H, or AH9 in the UK and Europe, which was meant to be launched later in 2020, didn't come to fruition because of the pandemic. So what happened in 2020 is that the torch of the Master Series OLED in the 55-inch and also 65-inch models was still carried by 2019's Bravia AG9 or A9G in the USA. So I think it is getting a bit long in the tooth and I would be extremely surprised if Sony doesn't actually launch a new Master Series OLED at CS 2021 for the new year to replace the AG9 or A9G. And I would expect this to have HDMI 2.1 support as well, just like how in 2020, Sony has sort of done a feeler. You know, they put out this mid-range Sony XH90 or X900H, which provides two HDMI 2.1 ports with an HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second on HDMI 3 and HDMI 4. And I expect that this chipset may make its way to higher end models in 2021. So I think, you know, especially with Sony themselves being responsible for the PlayStation console, albeit in different divisions, I think, you know, it would be very surprising for me not to see more HDMI 2.1 OLEDs from Sony next year. And there are also some unconfirmed rumors about an 88-inch 8K OLED from Sony. And I think, you know, that will be a suitable venture, certainly, especially how they want to actually get a master series TV in every screen size. And an 88-inch 8K OLED will certainly fit the bill and would cover the master series television between say 85 inch and 88 inch in fact i don't even know for 2020 what the 85 inch master series tv is meant to be because i think you know for 2019 it was taken up by the zg9 or z9g but in 2020 only the 98 inch master series was the ZG9 or Z9G, whereas the 85-inch ZH8 or Z8H, you know, I don't think they received the master series billing. So I'll be interested to see whether Sony comes out with a new 88-inch master series OLED, which is 8K. And I think that if you are expecting this to be affordable, I think, you know, you can dream on, to be honest, because if LG is pricing their 88-inch 8K OLED at say 30,000 or 35,000 pounds, then I think there's no chance that, you know, Sony will be pricing this lower than LG, considering that, you know, the panel cost in terms of the raw production must be very high from the side of LG display in terms of the supply. So that's Sony. Next, let's move on to Panasonic. First, before I start talking about any preview or expectations for 2021, I would first like to congratulate respected US dealer Robert Zohn of ValueElectronics.com for managing to secure an exclusive deal to start supplying Panasonic OLEDs again in the USA to the general consumers. These are 
professional panels that will come with warranty. So I'm really excited for some of you video enthusiasts in the USA who have been wanting to see or experience the beauty of Panasonic OLEDs for yourself. And if there's enough interest, I will try and do another video covering the Panasonic models that are supplied by Robert Zone at valueelectronics.com. But for CS 2021, Panasonic has issued a teaser poster and in it, there is this tagline, feel it all, which, if I'm honest, you know, sounds like perfect fodder for one of my famous double entendre, which is another French phrase added to my vocabulary since a few videos ago. But feel it all to me may suggest the addition of HDMI 2.1 finally on Panasonic OLED TVs. And if you know the history of Panasonic OLEDs, you know, they have been very well tuned for the home cinema and also the video enthusiast market, but they don't generally appeal to the gaming crowd because it doesn't have HDMI 2.1, it doesn't have VRR, it doesn't even support 120Hz in 1080p. And I hope, you know, all those are going to change next year for CS2021 and it will tie in with the tagline of Feel It All which means that you, know, you will be able to get a more immersive, a more responsive gaming experience from Panasonic OLED. The gaming industry is even bigger in terms of revenue than the home cinema industry. And with the PS5 and also the Xbox Series X launching this year, the gaming market was bound to explode. And many people out there are looking for an HDMI 2.1 TV with VRR and also 4K 120Hz support to be paired up with these next-gen consoles. And I think that many OLED brands, including Panasonic, have missed an opportunity in 2020 to come out with an HDMI 2.1 TV to fulfill the demand, but hopefully this will be rectified next year. And I think, you know, that will be the end of this video now. I have some other TV brands that I should be talking about, but I cannot confirm or deny that I have received briefings from them under NDA. So, you know, to prevent myself getting into a sticky situation, you know, I won't actually talk about them, but rest assured I'll be covering actual news about these manufacturers at CES. If you'd like to watch some of our other videos on next-gen display technologies, I created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.